Hi and welcome to Drawing Laura Croft from Digital to Analog, Part 2. Uh, hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist in the Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now and I'm here to empower you. And uh, one of the things that is going, you're going to see this time around, I tried to do something experimental this time around, and that is I actually used the, the, the C a, a CG model that I downloaded for uh, Clip Studio Paint, and then I posed the model the way I wanted in order to be able to draw over it and do the final drawing. So you'll see me do, use it and how I used it. And um, so let's get to it and show you how I, how I did it. So right off the bat, like from the last video, that's, that's what I had left. And then um, before I even started recording, I kind of imported the model. I posed it out the way I wanted. I did some adjustments here. I'm doing some adjustments right now uh, for the model. And then using the reference here, uh, using my old drawing, my original drawing as the model sheet, I then decided to use it as, as my guide and then I drew on top of the model. It was really helpful. I, I found it to be um, extremely helpful. Uh, I, I liked it. Uh, I would probably use the model like this more if it wasn't for the fact that they, the model doesn't actually, po it isn't very poseable. It, it's really stiff and you can't really push it. It, it. There's limits to it and it's kind of annoying. And you also saw me adjust the head because I still, the, the head was way too wide based off of the model, so I shrunk it and I adjusted it. And the rest, it, it, I, I essentially just drew from my head after that. Um, the model was just a really good guide to give me some, uh, some uh, layout uh, for per the perspective that I needed to have. And then I use my reference for the clothes, how the clothes works, um, uh, what it looks like, and here's the model again. So I wanted the character to have her hand similar to the way that she has it there in my reference. So I moved the hand to wherever it was that it needed to be so that it could kind of feel like she's gonna reach out, reach behind and reach for an arrow. <clears throat> so again, very handy to have that already there. And even then, I still adjusted it. I still didn't use the model completely as it was. I um, and, and, and at first I started using the hand that was there on the, on the reference and decided against it. In fact, what I ended up doing off camera was I took a photo of my hand and then that's actually what I, uh, I was looking at it and I was, because uh, I was having so much trouble with it, right? So I drew the hand there. And then I drew a pic, uh, took a photo of my hand and so that's why the hand starts becoming much more accurate because I, I, I took a photo of my hand like this and then that's what I used for the hand because it it's a really tricky hand position to have done. And after that, I was just using the reference for the details. Uh, where should I put these arrows? I didn't know exactly where to put them. Um, I ended up putting them right behind her. You can sort of see them in the background. Looking at the reference for the, for, for the arrow. I needed more space so I had to shrink her down and notice I shrunk her down but I didn't shrink down the model and that kind of comes and bites me in the butt later because I bring the model back in. I needed the model for something later on. It'll, it'll come up soon. But um, it, uh, I had to reduce the size of the model. Then the uh, it's time to start finessing and refining some of this. <clears throat> so once I have the general idea as to the general placement of all the features, uh, the gist of what I want those eyes and mouths to look like, then I come in and do a much more refined final 
drawing of those things. And notice that I actually put the, there's a space between the interior of the eye, the white of the eye uh, over here on the, on the area, on this eye in particular, and then where the eyelashes come in, the, the eyelashes, uh, they don't start inside the eye, they start, you know, on the outside part and there's like a little ledge so I'm putting that in there. I'm making sure that it's very clear that there is a space between the white of the eye and the eyelashes. There's like a thickness, uh, the thickness of the eye. It, it just adds that extra level of credibility to an exaggerated cartoony eye. And again, refining and refining. And I think, in fact, when I go and do the final line, the, the ink line, uh, the back of the head, I actually shrink it with the ink line. I, I think I, I thought that the, the, the head was too wide in the back. And going with the perspective, because uh, it was really handy that, the, that having that model really showed me the perspective of her torso. So it was, it was a handy thing to do, and, I, and, and um, as of the time of this recording, I'm actually drawing a different postcard, and I've used another model uh, because I thought it was so helpful, uh, but not a, not a Clip Studio paint model. I think the, the Clip Studio paint models were just way, way too restrictive in, their, in, in the ways, the places that you could pose them. And so I, I, but what is helpful, remember in the last video I had so much trouble coming up with a good pose? Well, the thing about using the, a model that I actually end up really enjoying is that I don't have to sketch out the pose and sketch out the pose. I could actually like take a photo, take a photo reference, see a pose that is pretty much what I want, and then pose the model in that pose and then move it around and, and move the camera around and see where I would like it to be and then I adjust the pose away from that reference and it's so helpful. The only problem with using these models is that the anatomy is wrong. It, it, the, uh, depending on the, on the model you have, um, it, it's, not, it, it's, not an, it's not accurate to, to real life anatomy and so you don't want to you, you're still going to want to either pose certain things out yourself so that you could actually see how the anatomy really works, how flesh really works on top of muscle, as opposed to the clunky, uh, uh, unnatural uh, build of a CG model that doesn't, that, you know, when, when a CG model arms go like this the muscle doesn't contract it just stays and, it, it, and things like that that it, it doesn't it doesn't really work and here is the final line like so this entire video is uh took place among i mean uh, i think it was about two days three days so uh this is day three uh where i did the final line so like the previous video, there is a slowed down real time version of this, and it's about two hours long. It's available to watch only to my patrons so that they can see really how long it really took and so that they could actually see the, the real process because the sped up process, this, this, this um, speed drawing style video is a complete and total lie. Uh, it makes you think that uh, that a drawing should be done this quickly. Uh, so it's always good to actually see the real process, see how long it actually does take to do a drawing. And to that end, I have uploaded a full video. There is no commentary on it because it's two hours long. I don't want to comment on it for two hours it's fairly self-explanatory but um, you can see so but what that does what this this does is that it lets you at least if you don't want to sit down and watch the entire thing you could uh, 
fast forward to the spots that you are curious, the most curious about and see how it looks like to have drawn those things in real time. Now you saw me do a, a, bl uh, a bland line there around the character. It's, it was, it's a deadline is what I like to call it. Um, there is no thick and thin to it. And then once I had that outline drawn, then I drew the interior and the interior is much more finessed. It has thicks and thins and, and, it's, and it's, it's a little bit thinner inside, uh, stuff like that. And that's, that's just a very, that's a, that's a stylized decision. It's, it's the type of Art Nouveau type of drawing, but it's also very um, uh, graphically pleasing because you get the exterior graphic shape and then you get the interior line. <clears throat> and there's some bumps in there. I don't want those bumps. And the thing about Clip Studio Paint is that it allows me to go in really and, 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 and uh, with vector lines because it, it does vector lines, I can mess around with it. Uh, putting in the blacks, just making sure that I get the fullest black effect as possible. Adding extra highlights uh, to the face. And now the figure is complete. So the next step is to... Uh, Create a selection, like like add a add a add a some opacity to the character, uh, and turn it white so that um, she stands out. She's not transparent uh, because the background, obviously, you can see behind her. So I needed to create like a um, a selection, a type of just a uh, there uh, an opaque white area so that. You, she, you, she wouldn't be transparent. You couldn't see right through her. And the next step, and just, and right here, I'm just kind of finessing little bits and pieces of it. Now the next step will be to. Oh, and actually, I'm cleaning up um, stray lines and things like that. The next step is to do this background design so that it's uh, much more appealing, much more interesting. And so what I end up doing is I take the the starburst kind of uh, design drawing that I did for the last postcard. Uh, here I soften up that elbow. It was much too sharp. I actually raised her up a little bit more because I thought that it just wasn't it just wasn't it was there was too much tangent between the top of her head and the circle. And so, just adding that and oh and I don't show where I actually add the starburst from the last vid from the next video so that's it that is the the video how I uh, did the final line on there the next video you're going to actually see me begin the coloring process and the coloring process will be completely analog the final drawing will be completely analog so you're going to see me start doing the analog part of this of the process and uh, you're going to see me do the thumbnail coloring the practice runs before i do the final it's going to be a much shorter video because it's a touch redundant i keep doing the same thing over and over and over but all of it is an experiment and i think you're going to enjoy that you're going to find that very interesting so stick around for the next video for that and again if you want to see the full video how long it actually takes to do a drawing this was this drawing took two hours to do and it's been shortened to about 11 to 10 minutes which is completely unrealistic so don't assume that it takes this long to do a video to do a, a drawing okay so thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. All right. Bye.